Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I was just getting lost in that beautiful music. Didn't it just sound like the baptism waters flowing over us this morning? Thank you for that way of coming into worship and remembering the beautiful Savior played by the bells. I think this is the last time this uh, season that they are playing. Oh, how we love you. Thank you for uh, that beautiful music you share. So it is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and that is amazing to me that it is the end of April. Where has the time gone? And we are in this beautiful Easter season still today, as you see the crosses coming in the narthex with, draped in white, and you see our Paschal candle lit. It is a beautiful day to be in the presence of Jesus Christ and celebrating the resurrection. So let's stand and worship him. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. We sing a hymn of glory.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join with me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruits of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Acts 8. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. And there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shear, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, 
does this prophet say about himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Word of God, word of life. The responsive reading is from Psalm 22. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship, and all who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. The second reading is from 1 John 4. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By by this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. As we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world, God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, we are, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite the children up. <laughs> First to arrive, you get to hold this. <laughs> there. Oh, wow, it's wonderful to have all of you have a seat up here. Thank you. Uh, It's almost May, lots of things going on this week. 
when I was uh, in school, sometimes we would do a May Day celebration. Do anybody, does anybody do a May Day celebration anymore? It was like with a May pole that there was a, a big pole and there would be ribbons on the top and then you would hold them and you would cross uh, and uh, wrap it around there. You would be intertwined. And I think it's kind of a really good message today. Uh, God is talking to us through the scriptures of John, through Jesus, which Jesus is connected to God, and then he's sending the Holy Spirit, which is connected to uh, God. It's the whole society in the triune God. And so it talks about being connected. Um, and I was talking to Lauren, and she reminded me of what we made last year. It's a little uh, tangled there today, but do you remember making this? Okay, well, it was all about being connected. Let's see if I can untangle it a little bit, see how far it would reach. But we did this because we said it's important for everyone, everyone, to know five people. Do you know five people? Good. Can you name five people right in your head right now? Hopefully. <laughs> if not, I have a whole bunch of people I can introduce you to. Okay. But you see, besides your mom and dad, your grandparents, your cousins, your best friends at school, there are people here that gather on Sunday. Sometimes people think we're the weird ones because we think Sunday mornings you get up and you come to church and you praise God. What do we know? Why do we come? It's because we know that every single person here is connected to God. Now, I don't have enough paper clips to go all the way up to where God is, but Jesus came down to earth so that we might know God. And so, can you just hold on to that a little bit there? Yep, see Lane? Lane's connected to Eva. Let's keep passing this down. Eva, can you scoot down there and be connected there? Uh, yeah, everybody just get up and move and grab hold of this connection. You can stand. It might make it easier. Come on, stand up, grab a little bit of this paper clip. There's something. Now we're all connected. Now, uh, without appointing a leader, I'd like you to get over there to that side. Ah. Do you know what you're showing? You're showing cooperation, consideration. You're walking kind of slow so everybody makes it. Okay, what if Lane decided, I don't want to go there? What would happen? <laughs> yeah, it would break the connection. And so this is what we're, we're abiding by holding on to this together and moving together, knowing that God is giving us the direction to go. So when you think of the word abide, can you say abide? It means you're all connected. So everything everybody here does matters. Every single thing you do matters to somebody else. That's a really deep thought. So this week, here's your challenge. I want you to think about everything you do and how it will affect somebody else. Like if you were sitting at the lunch table and you decided you were gonna eat all the food, what, what would you think? Would that affect anybody? Sure, okay, so God says, I have enough food on this table, you have to divide it. When we come to the communion table, and this is, I remember this in our communion instructions, that we divide that meal to be completely shared and this meal will be completely shared by everybody who partakes today. And if there's leftovers, what do we do? We give it to the birds. We give it back to God so that we all are always thinking of the other. That's abiding. Let's pray. Good and gracious God. Good and gracious God. Thank you for being our center. Thank you for being our center. And thank you for connecting us forever. And thank you for connecting us forever. Amen. Amen. Now, I want one big cheer and say, look around these people. 
lift your right arm and say, do what I say, abide. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird word. You don't get to cheer it very often, but abide. It's a good thing. Okay, <laughs> have a good, good week thinking of others and everybody else. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. According to St. John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit that stirs in us to share the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. I love uh, our screen. It, the picture says everything. I could just say, this is the sermon. Do you get it? <laughs> there are all those grapes growing because they're all connected. You see, this is the God we serve, the one who loves us so much. And we can name, I hope, at least one person on this earth that loves you. If not, I want you to know I love you. And that is true and real. But if you have somebody that loves you, they're watching out for you. And I first always go back to my parents as if you were going on a trip. You know, if you were going to 4-H camp, you always got this letter. It was really important because it was the packing list. And if they told you you needed it, you packed it. If you needed a flashlight, you went out and bought it and got the batteries with it. We do it every day to the ones we love. We say, I think it might rain, take an umbrella. I think it might get cold, take a coat. It's thinking of the people you love, of the other person. What could you tell them that would help them know how much you care about them? You see, sometimes when we look at the Bible, we just read the words and we forget that it's the story of love that is being said to us right here. In this book of John, right here in chapter 15, Jesus is not yet crucified. It's the week before, the night before he was being crucified and no one knew what was going to happen yet, but there was unrest and there was conflict. And they knew Jesus was saying some words to make them think that he was going to be killed. And that is dark. And here is Jesus, who is always bringing the light. He's looking right at them, all of his disciples. And this is called, in the book of John, the farewell discourse. Now, those are words that if you don't study the Bible a lot, you don't understand exactly what it is. It is Jesus saying, this is what I'm going to leave you. I'm getting ready to leave and I want you to know all of this stuff. I want you to know when you need the umbrella and when you need the coat and when you need the flashlight. So every word that he says in the rest of the book of John is for us to know how we are always going to be connected, how we are always going to be abiding in him. And you, so, you know, this God who created us I find this to be such a miracle in itself because if, if you ever have been around little children, and we all have been little children, so that includes all of us, right? That in the first five years of your life, you play with toys that connect. You have building blocks. Legoland is all over the place, and it's not just for little kids anymore. We find it fascinating how we connect things and how we can grow. If you would turn it back to this scripture, this is exactly what God intended for us to know. That instinct that's in us to always want to be connected, to always want to belong. And this is what God gives us. His word saying, Jesus is saying, I am the true vine. If you just want to say, I'm the vine, a lot of people said, I'm the vine. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. We have a lot of vines. We have a lot of vines that are growing all around us. But when Jesus is saying, I am the true vine, that's significant. He's telling them, I am the one that is fulfilling the scripture. I am from God. In fact, in John, those words are really important. And if you walk down our hallway right across from the office, you'll see seven posters of Jesus saying, I am. He wanted us to know who he is. So take some time and walk down there and learn what he's saying, I am. And then he says, you are. 
God doesn't just talk about himself. He tells us who we are. And when he says you, he means all of us. You are the branches, and you are important. But the only way you're going to have life is by staying connected to the vine source. This is a picture of the triune God. It's so difficult to explain it, so pictures and art is so much better because you see there are leaves, there's fruit being bared. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Those are the leaves of life that Jesus gives us, and the vine is connected to God, the source. We see it all around us in the creation. And we should always be ready to be surprised about where we see it. And we talk a lot about pruning, and I have heard this used over and over, and pruning is a very good thing. It's not to cut off people. It's God's way of saying, I know you could do better. I know that I can make your life abundant. You stay connected to me and I'll take these waters and I will cleanse you. In the Hebrew word, pruning needs cleansing. And only God does that. And that's pretty wonderful. Because that relieves the branches to just be who we are. Because God created us to just be who we are. To rest connected to him forever. To belong. In this world, so many people don't think they belong. And it is the thing that we need so much of. God is saying to all of us, you belong. I make sure you know that I love you. And now your task is to tell other people that same story. But then the vines get in the way, the other vines. And I cannot talk about sin any better than comparing it to poison ivy. Because if you have ever had poison ivy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you are one of the lucky people in the world that don't get poison ivy, you just have no idea how awful this is. And I watch for poison ivy. I don't know where those poison ivy vines come from, but I know every time I reach my hand to pull a weed or something, I get poison ivy and it overtakes my life because it may start just like on my hand, just a little bit, but before I know it, it's on my legs, it's in my eyes, it's on my cheeks, it's in my ears. I can feel that poison ivy and it consumes me. I can only think about poison ivy. I can't think about anything else and I want to itch it all the time. We have a lot of poison ivy vines in our life, materialism where we think if we own it, we will be happier. I had a beautiful conversation with a person this week, and I had never heard it described this way. But he said, if I had $80,000 in the bank and owned a $1,000 truck, people would think I was poor. He goes, but if I had $1,000 in the bank, and owned an $80,000 truck, people would think I was rich. I thought that was very eye-opening. It's that vine of sin that pulls us away from the center of who Christ wants us to be. Wanting, consuming, thinking who we are, the status and achievements we've, we've made, make us better. And what we always find is there's always a need for more. There's always somebody who has more than we have and they must be doing something right. Or there's somebody smarter in your class, somebody that's going to a better college, somebody who looks like they are just having it all together. But when it comes right down to it, all of us, all of us are weak. And all of us have those things that pull us against that centered source of Jesus Christ, the vine of abundance. And so the words of First John, I love this reading. And if you love to talk about love, you want to call, you want to go to the book of First John because that's what he talks about. Have you ever heard the word love more than the scripture read today? 
And he's saying, if you love God, you cannot hate your brothers or sisters, not one of them, or you're a liar. Well, I don't like to read that, do you? I don't like to say somebody thinks that I'm a liar if I don't love everybody. Everybody, God, you're asking us to love everybody. And God says, yes. Now, I'm not asking you to approve. I'm not asking you to change everything about your life to love somebody else. I'm just telling you, I want you to love them and see that I created them and that there is life in that person too. You can ask questions. Love can look like a lot of different things, but love is what God is telling us to do. I had this book that I was going to bring into the children's sermon, but I thought it would do a little bit more up here. It was called The, the Survivor Tree at 9-11. And I've told this story over and over because it was a miracle. On the grounds all around 9-11 when the towers fell and the, the dust and the concrete and everything is just covering everything. It was the center of death. Along comes this little green sprout that makes it all the way through. No one could have done that but God. Can you imagine while you're looking for everything that was in that pile of de debris, of dust, of body parts, you find this green sprout that says, I'm still here. I'll never leave you. And so the tree, the tr survivor tree, was taken out of that, given better soil, loved and cared for, and they replanted it there. And if you don't know the story, you might miss it when you go to see the 9-11 memorial, because it's just out there, and they have it strapped down so that you know this is the survivor tree. That's what God does for every single one of us. I'm looking at a forest here. You guys are all survivor trees. God said, I make your life new, restored. I give you a community that will help take care of you, and you will take care of them. That's called the kingdom. It's living the kingdom culture. And you feed it the fertilizer that you need all the time, and that is the washing with the baptism waters. You only have to cleanse yourself once. And then you just keep reminding yourself that God has already spoken the word over you and you are cleansed. Feed it with the best meal that you could ever have, and it is the cup and the bread. And come often. Remind everybody who you are and that you're right there. And then he gives us the power. And we're going to celebrate the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, May 19th, and get your red clothes out because it's a celebration to say God comes down from heaven, gives us that Holy Spirit, and we are going to rejoice. And then he wants us to live in that feeling of abundance, not scarcity, that we will never have enough. God says, that's not the way you live. I give you your daily bread every day. You will have it. Trust me. But when you live in abundance, you live in that glory of God. And that's with the abundance of the fruit of the Spirit. Abundant joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. And the most important one so we can love everyone is self-control. You see, God gives us everything. And when Jesus was asked to teach us to pray, he put it all in that prayer. And we're going to get to pray it today. You get to pray it, not just say it. The kingdom and the power and the glory are, is ours forever and ever. It binds us together. We look just like that. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers, and for the mission of the gospel. We keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your words and help us to abide in you always. For the well-being of the earth and of all created things, for rivers and lakes, streams and estuaries, melting glaciers and polluted waters, renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness. For the nations and all those in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives of every level, and for the international organizations, that justice and peace may reign. For those who have lost their freedom, for the hostages who remain in Gaza, help those in power put an end to this war and obtain their freedom. And may your love conquer evil once and for all. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression, or seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering, especially Heidi, Keith, Bruce, Sydney, Nyla, Sean, Kathy, Joni, Ernie, Kendall, Terry, Frank, John, Cooper, Melissa, Chris, Roseanne, Barb, Tim, Amanda, Bill, Karen, Brent. For this congregation, for the caring ministers of this faith community, for all who visit the minist for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, and for all who seek to share the love with the world. For those who are in dire need to rebuild their homes, communities, and lives from the recent devastation brought on by tornadoes earthquakes and fire. Restore, O oh God, of all creation and make us whole. With thanksgiving for the saints who rest from the, their labors, help us like them to bear their fruit and to become your disciples. And at the last, bring us to the heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table. We especially pray for the family and friends of Jim Caldwell. Eternal rest grant him, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon him. Lord, we lift up to you, Ashley. Protect her and give her what she needs, Lord. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace of the Lord. Thank <laughs> you.
Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
with this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table.
hand and where it's comfortable to hold the person's hand next to you, please do. We're all connected. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep your hearts and minds in his grace. Amen. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. A few announcements. I'm sad to say our elevator is still not repaired. It is in need of a, a complete over make and it's taking a little bit of time. We had a beautiful council meeting and we're trying to think of alternatives and I just pray that moves quickly so that all of those who are in need of the elevator, we can accommodate what we need to get these doors open and easy for you to access. Um, Wednesday, May 1st, Outdoor Communion, what a wonderful way to start May off. So 12 noon, I'll meet you in the parking lot. Next Sunday is a big day, it's new here, and I'm asking you to go home and dig up some soil and put it in a container, and we are going to bring it up front, and we are going to bless it with our baptism water. You will take it home, and you will spread it on your grounds, and knowing that God is blessing all of the soil in the growing season, it is called Rogation Sunday, and it happens before Ascension Day which is May 9th, and we are celebrating the Ascension Sunday thanks to our Welka, who is providing the lunch. We need to know if you're coming so we can have plenty of food. It is a beautiful celebration, and it's on a Thursday, always on a Thursday. So May 9th um, is the Ascension Day. Don't forget to go home and just pick up that soil and put it in a container so it's not going to uh, scatter all in here. Not too much will grow on top of the carpet. About uh, I hope you'll look forward to that. Uh, and of course, we have Sunday school and lots of service things going on. Last Sunday, we had the opportunity to clean up yards. This was planned before the tornado, but uh, Lauren Atkins had arranged it. It was so much fun. I never had so much fun picking up sticks in my own yard, but it sure was a lot of fun doing it with everybody else. And I thank everybody who was part of that. There's blessings all around us. Listen to this one. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. People of good hope, we are grounded in faith, gathered in love, and sent with a purpose so that others may gain the kingdom. And we sing, let all things now living.
Alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.